Hi again. In this last video, um, this is going to be a short one. I'm just going to help you to see how um, you can figure out how fast an object is rolling when it reaches the bottom, bottom of an incline. Um, in order to actually understand this too, you're going to have to use the, the um, results that we got from the earlier lessons. So uh, again, the picture is an object on a ramp and um, the object starts off with the GPE up here and when it gets down to the bottom it's going to have both translational and rotational kinetic energies, right? Because it's, it's, it has, its center of mass is moving with the velocity v and it's also rolling which means it has some omega as it goes. So we showed in the previous lesson that the translational kinetic energy can be known, um, and we showed that this ratio is, is something that, that works. So translation to GPE is equal to 1 over 1 plus C. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange that. by cross-multiplying GPE. And I'm then going to basically substitute in the formula for kinetic energy and for gravitational potential energy. And I'm going to try to solve for, for the velocity V. Okay. So at this point, we're going to now say that kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mV squared. And the V in that equation is the v in this picture, and that would be the center of mass velocity of the object. That's going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus c times the gravitational potential energy, and now we have to look at the, the, the picture here. Um, let's, make, let's make h the height of the ramp. So that means that the object has a gravitational potential energy equal to mgh when it starts. So what we want to do now is just basically solve for V, and that will tell us how fast the object is moving when it reaches the bottom. So maybe you're looking at this and you're thinking masses cancel out. They do. Uh, You've got to multiply both sides by 2, and then you'll have to take a square root. So what we're going to end up with here is that the velocity at the bottom of the ramp is going to be equal to 2 times G times H, divided by 1 plus c, whole thing, under the square root. And that's going to be the answer we wanted. That is the final center of mass velocity. Okay? And so that's what we were trying to get. Okay? Um, I want to make a couple comments about that. This is an important result. Um, first of all, I'd like to point out, like, what is not in this formula, right? What's missing? And things that are missing would be the mass of the object, right? That doesn't show up. But maybe that doesn't surprise you, because after all, gravity is causing this to happen, and oftentimes mass cancels out when, you talk, when gravity is affecting something. So mass is not part of this. But the other thing that's not part of this is the radius of the object itself. So remember, whatever the shape is, the shape has some type of a radius in a mass, but apparently the radius doesn't matter. So um, this means that shapes uh, can have very different radiuses, but they can still basically come down to the, the bottom of a ramp with the same speed. Um, so these two things are not part of this equation. We'll, we'll do a demonstration of this in class for sure. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is what is in here? So what, what does V depend on? And clearly there's three things that show up. One of them, of course, is G for gravity, of course. One of them is the height of the ramp, of course, <laughs> because the higher the ramp, the faster the object is going to be moving. But the last thing is probably the most interesting. That's C, which is the shape factor. 
And the idea would be that um, as the shape factor increases, right, if C becomes bigger, what happens is that this whole expression is going to get smaller. And so the velocity is going to go down. And um, the idea would be that, uh, that shapes that have a large shape factor basically take more of their energy and put it into rotation. And so there's less energy that's available for, um, for translation. Okay. Um, and so, uh, for example, just to make a picture of it, right? If you have like a hoop, you know, it has a radius r and a mass m, the shape factor of that hoop is equal to 1. Um, if you have a, a, a disk, same radius, same mass, the shape factor for the disk is now going to be one half, and that's assuming it's a uniform disk. And that makes a big difference, right? Uh, when you when you look at the velocities that you get here, when you find the final velocity for the hoop, you're going to get two g h over one plus one. When you get the final velocity for the disk, you get two g h over one plus one half. And I hope you can tell, right, that that you've got a bigger denominator here, one plus one is bigger than 1 plus 1 half. And so the object, which is going to be moving faster, is going to be uh, the disk. So if you were to compare those, I'm not going to do the math on this, but I hope you can see that if you have a bigger denominator here, you're going to have a smaller overall v. And so objects that have their mass spread out more will reach the bottom of the ramp, but they're not going to be moving as fast in, meaning their centers of mass won't be moving as fast. And that's because, um, because of the fact that the uh, less energy goes into translation. So objects that have large rotational inertias put more of their energy into rotation, um, and they have less into the actual translational part. Okay? So this is the last little sequence here in, the, in our video lessons, but hopefully that helps you. The equation that is an important one is this. And perhaps more importantly is just the idea that you know how to get there. Um, so try this out, work on, use it for your homework, but, but most importantly think about what the concepts were that we talked about here. All right, good luck.